Hi everyone. So there's something that really struck me in this past Torah portion of Shemot, which was the negotiation between Moshe and Hashem regarding Moshe going on his mission to go speak to Pharaoh and save the Israelites. Because I think it touches on something very real psychologically. There's this kind of pushback and resistance, and it starts on these very sort of lofty, you know, premises. Uh, you know, he says, well, you know, they're going to want to know your name. And then Hashem says, okay, well, here's the name you're going to tell them. And then Moshe says, well, wait, 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 maybe they're not going to believe me. So Hashem says, okay, here are some signs, you know, that you can show them. And in between the lines, you might even hear Hashem kind of preempting a possible concern about their financial welfare. Seemingly out of nowhere, Hashem says, well, you know, don't worry. They're also going to have a lot of gifts from the Egyptians and they're going to be going to a land of milk and honey. Like maybe Hashem is saying to him, if you're worried that they're going to go into the desert and just waste away, don't worry about that either. And what's so interesting is that after all these initial sort of objections, Moshe really cuts to the chase. And he says, Hashem, I'm not a man of words. He says, I'm not a man of words, neither from yesterday, nor from the day before yesterday, nor from the time you have spoken to your servant. For I am heavy of mouth and heavy of tongue. Now that's interesting. From the time you have spoken to your servant, we're in the conversation right now. What, what is he even saying there? I think here it's sort of like those babushka dolls where you... You know, you open up one and you find another one until you finally get to the middle one. So it's like Moshe's starting with these different layers. First, it's like theological. It's a philosophical problem. What is God? What is God's name? There's a philosophical problem. Then it gets to a more practical problem. Like, what if the people don't believe me? It's, not, it's like a national issue. This is not about me. It's, it's about the nation. How am I going to get public support for this? But then when you open it up, what's layered inside of the inside is this fear that basically says, I'm just not good enough. And when I'm reading that, it really hits home because at least this is my experience. Like I have a lot of excuses in my mind when I have to you know, face something that I know I should be doing or I feel called to be doing. I can philosophize, you know, make excuses like, you know, saying, uh, well, who even knows if it's the right thing? Who even knows what Hashem wants? And then I can make practical excuses like, well, how could I find time? I have kids. I have work, yada, yada. But deep down, I know that inside what's often holding me back is this feeling like, am I even worthy? Am I even good enough? And for those of us who are parents, this comes up all the time too with our children. Like, how do you help a child that's afraid of failing? So we have to read Hashem's answer really carefully and see how he's going to address this. Because I think he can model for us the faith-based response to this kind of challenge. Now, how is Hashem going to address this? One way Hashem could address this could be to sort of continue in the pattern of the answers given to Moshe's other concerns. Moshe said, they are not going to believe me. So Hashem said, here's a miracle. Here's a snake. Here's a miraculous leprosy on your arm and it'll be cured. Cool. That's cool, right? So if that's the pattern, what would we expect Hashem to say? Hashem could have just said, oh yeah, that little talking problem, magic stick, poof, it's cured. Your mouth is cured. You're a great speaker now. It's not out of Hashem's range. And you can kind of hear that maybe Hashem, Moshe is even expecting that because Moshe says, I'm not a good speaker from yesterday, the day before yesterday, or from the time that you spoke to me, but you're speaking to me now. Meaning I'm thinking that maybe if I'm speaking to Hashem, Hashem is going to heal me. It happens to us, right? So often like with our kids, when you see your kid having a problem, you want to make it go away. You know, you could fix this. You could just, just fix it up. But you know that if you do that, you're not going to let them grow. So that's the one way that Hashem doesn't take. Now, the other way, and this would sound familiar for those of us who grew up in the self-esteem, modern psychology kind of environment. This problem sounds really obvious and the solution sounds really obvious. What should Hashem do? Hashem should build his self-esteem, right? Oh, you're stutter, no big deal. No one notices that little thing. You are a great speaker. Believe in yourself. I believe in you. You can do it, right? That's what modern psychologists would tell us to do as parents, right? Praise your children. Build their self-esteem. You're amazing. You're wonderful. You're perfect. But Hashem doesn't go in either of those directions. What does Hashem actually say? It says, the Lord said to him, who gives a man a mouth? Who makes one dumb or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? So Hashem says, Hashem could have said, well, you know, you're perfect the way you are, but he doesn't. He says, who makes someone blind? Who gives people their shortcomings? I don't only give people talents. I give them shortcomings and I have a reason. But then he says in verse 12, so now go, I will be with your mouth and I will instruct you what you shall speak. For me, this is such a powerful lesson. Like he's saying, I'm not going to cure your problem. And I'm not going to tell you that your problem is not a problem. You're so talented. You're so amazing. I'm sure you'll be fine. I'm going to tell you, you have a problem. Not only do you have a problem, I'm the creator of every person's problems. I put your talents there and I put your shortcomings there. But when I choose you for a mission, I'm going to be with you. And your success or failure is going to have nothing to do with you and everything to do with me being with you and your faith in me, that is what Hashem is guiding us to. And this really hit home for me as like the emunah kind of 
faith response to that feeling that I think I, that I struggle with. And I think a lot of us struggle with, and it connected to our life on the farm and this fellowship, because, you know, sometimes I'll take a moment when things sort of are quiet enough to take a moment. And I pause and I look at the crazy life we're living. I look at this remarkable farm and meeting the most amazing people from all around the world. And who even gets to do that? And people turn to us of all people as a source of Torah and guidance. And we have, you know, this, you know, these amazing opportunities to travel and to teach. But as those of you guys who have met us on the road or in Israel know, we're just like the most regular people. We have a messy house. We're running around doing carpools and homework and squabbling about stupid things and forgetting to pay silly bills. And how in the world did we end up in this position? There are rabbis that are a million times smarter than us to be teaching Torah. There are farmers that are a million times more skilled and experienced than us to be trying to revive the land. And yet here we are for the simple reason that we couldn't escape. And we might have tried, but we could not escape the feeling of being called to this journey and this mission. And so Hashem's words here are really like echoing in my mind and strengthening because he's saying, you think I chose you without knowing your shortcomings? I know them better than anyone. Who makes one deaf or one seeing or one blind? I made you dumb Tehila, and I still want you and I will be with your mouth. So the solution is not in trying to escape the shortcomings, you know, magically hope to fix them or to whitewash them and make ourselves feel better about them. But the simple faith that Hashem reminds us here in verse 12 when he says, I will be in your mouth and I will instruct you what to speak. And perhaps that's the lesson we need to impart not only to ourselves, but to our children as well. That their success and failure turns not on what they're born with, but on knowing that when Hashem puts them in a position, you're not there for no reason. He does it knowing your strengths and knowing your weaknesses and through your faith that you are where you're supposed to be. And by knowing that, by being committed to following Hashem's instruction, that is the key to finding success and blessing on whatever journey you find yourself on. So that gave me some strength this week, and I hope uh, I hope it resonates with you guys too. Hope everybody has a great week. Bye, guys.